The second part of photosynthesis, the Calvin cycle, or Calvin-Benson cycle, is an extremely important one, and in 1961 uh, earned Mr. Calvin a Nobel Prize. So the Calvin-Benson cycle and the Krebs cycle are really similar in that they're, they're both cycles. They start and end with the same molecule. They also involve lots of different enzymes along the way, each of them doing a small part of the whole reaction. However, the Calvin-Benson cycle is essentially the backwards playing of the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle took a large organic molecule and broke it and released carbon dioxide, whereas the Calvin-Benson cycle is going to take in carbon dioxide and form a larger carbon molecule. I'm going to break it down into three stages and go over it that way. We can see that it, it is indeed a cycle, and we're going to start here with the molecule ribulose bisphosphate. That is a five carbon sugar, not one you're that familiar with necessarily. And this is the stage where we're going to take the one carbon carbon dioxide molecule and with the help of the very important enzyme Rubisco, we're going to take this carbon and add it to that chain, making a six carbon chain. That six carbon chain is immediately broken down into two three carbon molecules called phosphoglycerate. Next we're going to add some energy to this in the process of reduction. That may sound counterintuitive, but if you're familiar with the redox reactions, reduction is adding electrons. So we need some higher energy molecules, some ATP, some NADPH, to contribute some electrons. And as they do, they're going to convert these phosphoglycerate molecules into phosphoglyceraldehyde. Let's stop for a minute and compare these two molecules. So here they are in a little more chemical detail. And you can see that phosphoglycerate has an oxygen down here, whereas phosphoglyceraldehyde has a hydrogen. In all other respects, they're the same. But this one is more reduced and therefore has more energy. And in fact, phosphoglyceraldehyde is the main product of photosynthesis. That can then be used to make amino acids or glucose if you put a couple of these together. The last stage in this reaction is we need to get back up to the beginning and make another ribulose bisphosphate. We're going to need some more energy for that in the form of ATP. And in a rather complex series of reactions uh, involving the input of energy and several of these PGAL molecules, we will reform this ribulose bisphosphate. Now, especially if you're good at picking up on numbers, you should probably have captured the idea that glucose is a six carbon molecule. And very often, when we talk about photosynthesis, glucose is listed as the product. And as I just told you, it's really phosphoglyceraldehyde, but from our typical accounting, we put two of these together and make the six carbon glucose. Well, something doesn't quite add up here. I added one carbon, making a six carbon chain, and that I suppose I could use to make glucose, but not with just one carbon. True. So this cycle is going to need to happen six times in order to add six carbons. And then we will have enough phosphoglyceraldehyde to form a glucose. Again, we can make other products from this as well, but this is not just a single turn of the cycle. I hope you have a better appreciation for the intricate and vital process of photosynthesis after this. So the next time you see a plant, it looks like it's just standing there doing nothing. You realize that really it does a lot. Maybe you should even say thank you.